It's an egregious abuse of power. Pelosi has broken this institution. House Minority Leader there, Kevin McCarthy, tearing into House Speaker Nancy Pelosi after she rejected two of his picks to serve on the January 6th commission. Our panel is here to react. Today we have John Fleming, former Louisiana congressman and assistant, former assistant to President Trump. We have Mark Halpern today, political analyst, joining us live, as well as Rebecca Walzer, tax attorney. Good to see everyone here. Um, I want to go straight to Mark Halpern on this one uh, because I want to see how this is playing out in terms of politics and actually getting to the bottom of the truth. The way you read this, is Pelosi making a mistake by rejecting the two congressmen, Jordan and Banks? How do you read it? She wants a partisan investigation that her party can control, and she wants to get maximum advantage of it. And she also wants to see if there can be more fact-finding. So from the point of view of Nancy Pelosi in a divided Washington, a divided America, I think she's perfectly happy with this outcome, although there's clearly collateral damage for the country based on not just what she did yesterday, but what she's done throughout this process. But Mark, how, then how do you see McCarthy firing back, pulling the Republican nominees out? When she pushed the other two, he just pulled them out and said, hey, maybe we'll start our own commission. I, again, is this politics at play or was this the right move? Just like with Nancy Pelosi, Kevin McCarthy's engaged in base politics. The Republican Party has cast its lot with really challenging uh, the, the narrative the Democrats want to tell about the events of January 6th. And Kevin McCarthy could not possibly have given in to the demands to let Nancy Pelosi decide which Republicans would serve on this committee. As she herself said in her statement, this is an unprecedented move. It really upsets the balance of power in Washington that goes back generations. And it wouldn't have been possible politically to Kevin McCarthy to sustain saying, oh, Nancy Pelosi, you don't like my choices. Let me come up with some others that you like. Rebecca Walzer, I'll get your thoughts on this after listening to, to, to Mark's thoughts on this whole process here. Because you've got the American people that are watching, um, you know, D.C. politics at play when a lot of people just want to get down to the truth. What that may be to actually find out what that is and what this investigation could un entail, Rebecca. You know, Sean, I agree 100 percent with Mark. And what I will say as an attorney is we're taught in law school that robust debate and differences of, of opinions that are, you know, uh, rigorously debated is what gets us to the truth. So what America is going to see is Nancy Pelosi basically saying, no, we're not going to have Republicans that believe uh, after Trump. And they're seeing that against a, a video of Capitol Police waving people in and moving barricades out of their way. So you're going to have basically a whitewash here of people that only think a certain way, a group think tank, an echo chamber, if you will. And America's not going to buy that nobody that actually believes that uh, there's something nefarious that happened on January 6th is on that committee, and therefore we did not get to the truth. We got to the conclusions they've already made, and they're just going to publish it in a nice report and call it the truth. When America knows, and this is just further de disintegrating the trust that we have in our federal government at Washington, D.C., we're going to talk more about the um, the town hall that happened last night in Cincinnati uh, in the next block. But there was something that is relevant for this panel discussion. Don Lemon's advice uh, to Biden on this January 6th commission. Watch this. What they can do is try to change the narrative and say, well, why wasn't Nancy Pelosi prepared? Why weren't the Democrats prepared? For, no, they for can that say that and you can make honest judgments about it. John Fleming, your thoughts on that and, and, and Biden's quick response on that. And if you want to weigh in what the panelists already had to say on it, too. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, uh, President Trump was the one who urged the National Guard to be there on January 6th. And he was pushed away on that. This is totally partisan. Uh, Nancy Pelosi wants to shape the facts, wants to ignore uh, things that go against her narrative and that of the Democrat Party. But it's more than that. They know that. President uh, Trump is going to run again in four years. They're terrified about that, and they're doing everything they can to shut it down, just like they did with all the other moves when he was elected in 2016. Uh, you know, the Russian collusion theory, uh, pushing back against the Wuhan lab leak, and all the other things that have been proven to be right. So uh, she wants to continue that narrative, and they des they're desperate to hold on to the House and Senate mm -hmm. uh, in the upcoming midterm elections. And so they're willing to do anything to protect their radical moves that really are going to cause a tremendous flip towards Republicans in the coming election.
Rebecca, a lot of um, political critics, they point to this whole commission for the Democrats as something to stain the, the midterms, to last into the midterms, to be used as a political weapon. Uh, do you agree? Do you disagree? Your thoughts? I think that there, January 6th is going to be its own investigation unto itself, and we are going to get to the truth. I don't know when it's going to come, but we will get to the truth. There are too many things that have happened with January 6th, and I, I'm frankly tired of hearing it. It is called an insurrection. You know, you're talking up about people, and I'm not defending what people did. I mean, you should not have probably gone into the Capitol, but let's also remember that this is our government building. You know, if we can't have our citizens peacefully inside of our government building, I'm not talking about rioters and people with weapons, but it, what is the problem with allowing American citizens into the political process? We're supposed to be a part of it. So I frankly get very sick and tired of hearing it called and labeled as an insurrection. This is our people's house. This is Congress, and they are representing our voices. And all you had was a group of people there that were saying our voices are not being heard. Something did not go right with this election. We need to discuss it. And now they were reframed as insurrectionists, and they're still in jail. This is absolutely, you know, a police state that we're witnessing in real time. And people have got to wake up and start demanding accountability because this is the same political game that will not stand any longer in 2021. This is a warning shot across the bow of this country that people are not going to tolerate partisan investigations that do not reveal the absolute truth. We see the truth in videos. So don't give us a whitewashed commission of group think tank that does not get us any further to the truth. Skip the copy. Rebecca is going to wake you up this morning. Uh, good to see all you panelists. I want you to stick around. We have more to cover. That is John Fleming, Mark Halperin, and Rebecca Walzer. Stick around.